Thank you, Madam Speaker. Colleagues, we've all taken time from our lives to come and do the work on behalf of our communities. Personally, I came here to not only be a voice for my district, but for also my patients, their medical providers, and their caregivers. As we face the last weeks of session, I'm hopeful we won't lose sight of why we are here, what our constituents told us at their doors and in our offices. Here are a few things I will remember. Approximately 70% of children in the child welfare system are there because of a parent substance use disorder or mental illness. 68% of people involved in the criminal justice system scored as having high alcohol drug issues. Our own statewide student success tours reveal behavioral health issues are the number one factor student impacting success. The state hospital currently is at risk of being held in contempt for our treatment of individuals with mental illness. I think it's time we ask ourselves what all these costly outcomes have in common, and it is clear. It's lack of access to behavioral health treatment. This is an issue that will never be partisan. I'm sure everyone on this floor knows someone impacted by addiction or mental health issues. I'm sure everyone on the floor knows someone who would have benefited from the treatment of some kind. And unfortunately, everyone on this floor knows the story of someone who was unable to gain access. So what's the solution? I believe, as many public health experts do, in investing in upstream interventions. We in this building have the power to make it happen. We can prevent the tragedies that play out when we continually deny needed treatment to our most vulnerable citizens. We can choose to improve access to mental health and substance use disorder treatment instead of sending people to prison for which we're spending $1.9 billion a biennium. We can choose to improve access on behavioral health care instead of placing children in foster care for which we're spending $1.3 billion a biennium. And we can choose to improve access to behavioral health care instead of boarding people in emergency departments for which every Oregonian paying for an increased health care cost. And I can pepper you with more data if that will help. I could tell you that people with mental illness use the emergency department for physical health reasons at a two to one, excuse me, at a rate two and a half times greater than those without mental illness. But I don't think I need to, because you have all been telling me that this is an issue you want to resolve. I've heard it in nearly every committee, in discussions around law enforcement, around homelessness, around the safety of our classrooms, around foster care, and around suicide. It's time to put our money where our mouth is. Please join me in ensuring we don't leave session with a without a meaningful investment in behavioral health. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. Further remarks?